I'd like to talk to you today about some of the things that you can do with your consciousness. Some things that you may not know that you can do with your consciousness. You see, in this virtual reality, we are actually co-creators of this reality. And we co-create in many ways. One is just in the way we interpret things. Something happens and we have an interpretation of what happens. Other people see the same thing and they have a different interpretation of what happens. That means everybody lives in their own personal reality based on our interpretation. So in that way, you create your own reality through interpretation. Another way you create your reality is by your interactions. For example, if you are a user of people, hard to get along with, uh, mean-spirited, then what you create is a world where people will try to avoid you, where you won't be liked, you won't be invited, and you won't be welcome because you're not a nice person. And you create this reaction to yourself because of your choices, your, your actions. So that's another way you create your reality. And a third way you create your reality is the way this virtual reality works is that your intent modifies future probability. So what is likely to happen in the future, your intent can make it more likely or less likely. You have that ability to modify future probability. Now, one of the ways that, that this happens, all of us have heard of it, is called the placebo effect. If you tell somebody that they're taking a wonderful new medicine that will fix what's wrong with them, just by doing that and nothing else, just by telling them that and giving them a salt pill or a sugar pill or something that has no medicine in it whatsoever, will make a difference in their health. And many, many studies have, have, uh, have looked at this. And if there's a control group in which you just didn't tell them anything, you just gave them a pill and said, yeah, go swallow this and see what happens. You know, if that is the uh, control group, then the people who have a very positive attitude, their health will be better than the control group. You see, it's called the placebo effect. You can look it up. It's a real effect. It's not just that those people who had the positive outlook think they're healthier and really aren't. They really are healthier. You see, it's, it's a real thing. That's because that positive intent toward better health actually helps move the probability for better health a little higher and the probability for poor health a little lower. That's us modifying future probability. Now, you can use your mind with this intent to change health or most anything else that's probable. But because we're talking about probability, things that are, oh, let's say things that have a lot of uncertainty around them, they could go this way, they could go that way. It's not very certain about how they're going to work out. Those are the things that are easier to affect with your mind because you can move that probability only within the natural uncertainty of the problem, you see? So any problem, any issue, anything, whether it's health or whether it's, whether it's going to rain tomorrow, has a certain amount of probability that, you know, that that will happen. And if that probability has a fair amount of uncertainty in it, in other words, they don't really know for sure. Maybe the probability is a 0 0.6 versus a 0 0.4 or a 0 0.5 two versus a 0.48, you see, that has a lot of uncertainty in it. Therefore, that's easier for you to affect with your intent. If the probability is a very strong one, say 100,000 to one, that something's going to happen, well, you can use your intent and maybe you can change that probability all the way down to only 1,000 to one. Well, you changed it to all orders of magnitude. Wow, you're a real strong changer of probability but it's still not likely to happen because it's still a thousand to one, you see. So it's not that you can make anything you want happen, but you can modify the probable future. Now, how do you do this? You do it with an intent, but the intent isn't effective 
If it's an intellectual intent, if it's something you're thinking, that's only making a wish. It's like throwing your penny in the wishing well and say, oh, I wish for you know, a new teddy bear and a new bicycle. That's not very powerful. The intent has to come from the being level, from the core of you, from the center of your being. It needs to have power and not just be a, a wish. The power, you have to have a connection. You have to have some feeling, some emotion, some investment in this. It's not just a casual thing. It's something that means something to you. Yes, you can heal yourself as well as others. Yes, you can hurt yourself as well as others. Intent just changes probability. You can use this in many ways. But it's an interesting fact to know that you have three ways in which you get to change your reality. One, you get to interpret things. And if you interpret everything as miserable and unhappy and not the way you like it, in other words, if you're a complainer and you see the dark side of things, your life will be full of unhappiness and misery and difficulty. If you look at those same things and you see the positive side in it, then you will tend to be a happier, lighter, you know, more satisfied and fulfilled individual. That's just your choice of how you want to see things. And you also have to learn that however you make those choices, they're your choices. You can't say, oh, that person made me angry. So-and-so did that and that makes me angry. No, don't blame your anger on somebody else. If that person makes you angry, that's not what's going on. That person does something and you choose to be angry. So you have to take the responsibility for your choices. You have other options. You don't have to get angry. There are other choices in responding. But if you have too much ego, too much fear, too many beliefs, then you'll probably just get angry because that's what a person with a lot of fear, ego, and beliefs does. If you get rid of that fear, ego, and belief, then you'll have lots more choices that don't have anything to do with anger, constructive choices. That's why getting rid of that fear, ego, and belief will improve your relationships, will improve all of your connections to everyone in your life. So, we get to make our reality partially, not only partially. Other people also have free will to make choices, and you are affected by their choices. So, you can't control everything, only part of it. But that part of it you can control is pretty powerful once you learn how to focus your intent from the being level. Empty your mind, get rid of all the noise in your consciousness. Usually meditation is the way you do that. And have a clean, clear, powerful focus. Now there's other things that you cannot overcome, as well as other people's choices. You can't force other people to have different choices. And you can't force the rule set to be different than it is. So if a rock is rolling downhill, you can't just use your intent and say, stop rock, roll uphill. I want you to roll uphill. That won't work, you see, because now you're trying to uh, kind of change the rules under which the virtual reality works. Gravity's part of the virtual reality rule set, and rocks roll downhill when they, when they roll on their own. They roll downhill, not uphill. So you can't change the rule set. You can't change, you know, the way... Uh, things are going to happen that way, but you can change an awful lot just by growing up, getting rid of your fear, getting rid of your ego, developing your being level, developing your love and caring, and applying that to be helpful and cooperative with others. And your whole life will change and become a very positive, very happy, very fulfilling life. So the bottom line here is you do have some control over the reality you live in. And the 
biggest contribution you can make to this reality that you live in is to change yourself. If you want to know how to save the world from all of the greed and nastiness in the world, the biggest thing you can do, the most important and significant thing you can do is to change yourself. Grow up. Get rid of your fear, ego, and belief, and that will maximize your contribution to this world. Because by you doing that, you will help lots of other people with who you have contact do the same thing. As an example, and because we are all netted, this consciousness is netted, every consciousness is in the net. What we do and how we think affects other people.